One health care system for the rich and a substandard one for everybody else. That's what one prominent physician is saying. It's exactly what Obamacare is creating in America as we speak. Is he right? Hi, everybody. I'm David Asman. Welcome to Forbes on Fox. Let's go in focus. We have Rich Carlgard, Elizabeth McDonald, John Tamney, Sabrina Schaefer, Rick Unger, and we welcome Carrie Sheffield to the show for the first time. Carrie, thanks for coming. Thank you. Rich, first to you, there's a new study out that shows that by 2020, nearly 90% of Americans will be on some form of a government exchange. So we'll have 90% of Americans on one and 10% essentially the the well-off going for a specialty health care doesn't that show we're, we're working into a two-tiered system well it sure does and i'd point out the article you cited is a, is in the times a friend of the obama administration i can only imagine what enemies might say look the fundamental flaw of obamacare is on the supply side and that is is the heck of a lot of doctors are either going to take early retirement or are going to opt out and start a concierge practice for the rich and everybody else is going to be in this government system with weights that are going to be unbelievable uh, reminiscent of the UK's national health system where you're going to wait months and months and months for very critical things like hip replacements. And Rick, that's what they have in the UK. They've got one standard system for everybody, which I don't think a lot of, and then the rich people have their own thing. Well, this is kind of all over the place. I mean, the U.K. system is not what anybody, including the article in the New York Times, is suggesting. What the Times article is suggesting is that we'll see a shift away from health care being provided by employers onto the exchanges. And when you say government-run exchanges, you got to be careful. It's, it may be government-run exchanges, but it's private insurance companies that are on those exchanges. So let's not, you know, let's keep this somewhat straight. I actually think it's very possible you may see that shift take place. As for two-tiered health care, guess what? We've had that for a very, very long time, but long Carrie, before any of us heard of Obamacare. Okay, but Kerry, it is the direction in which we're going. And so far, it doesn't seem like we're going in a good direction. The number of options, for example, that's what America is great for. You have right. choices. And when right. you have choices, the prices generally come down and the quality generally goes up. Now right. those choices are diminishing. We have a big drop in the number of health care plans in the U.S. Right, and part of it is because of the mandate. So you have some bureaucrat in Washington who is deciding, I'm going to load these plans up like a Christmas tree. Every single mandate, every plan, uh, command and control, and the private insurers are saying, guess what? We're going to jack up these prices, and it's going to squeeze the middle class, it's going to squeeze them off the plans, and it's going to squeeze them onto these government plans. And Sabrina, it's also squeezing doctors. It's squeezing health clinics, all these specialty health clinics, really good like the Cancer Care Clinic, MD Anderson, Sloan Kettering in New York. Uh, they're saying they're not going to uh, accept exchange patients. So they're, again, fewer options. For right. Now. Remember when Leona Helmsley said taxes are for the little people? <laughs> I think we're going to see the same thing with Obamacare, right? Sloan Kettering is an elite um, institution for people with cancer, and this is something that is not going to be available for, for everyday Americans. The fact is that this is just showing in sharp relief the, the flaws of this system. Only when people own and control their health care dollars can determine their own risk factors. Um, can we have a health care system that will really work? All right. And Emac, when you have a problem, when you have a two tiered system, everybody being squeezed into this one size fits all system, you have rationing. And, and even Howard Dean, by the way, the former head of the Democratic Committee, has come out and spoken on this. He says, the IPAB, this is that, what used to be called death panels by some, it's the Independent Advisory Board. It's essentially a health care rationing body. He's using the word rationing. The IPAB will be able to stop certain treatments its members do not favor. Yeah, he said that also in an editorial. He wrote an editorial saying that. Uh, what he's saying here is, is that, listen, uh, let's, be, let's play it straight about what this body does. It'll set rates to levels where doctors are going to say, you know what, it just isn't affordable for us to treat these patients. Yeah, we've had a two-tier system, a concierge system where, system where people can pay cash. We've had it in Canada for a long time. We have a concierge system where in Congress you can get your own, quote, member services hotline into Aetna to get your services immediately. So that's that two-tier system. Listen, we see it across the board. We see doctors saying we have to shut down. We're not going to be in this health reform uh, exchange plan any longer. It just is not working for us. It doesn't basically keep our cost-benefit model in place. And John Tamney, we have to listen to the doctors. They are, they are the front line of our health care in America. And a lot of them, as Rich Cargard said, are moving to cash-only practices, getting out, not only getting 
exchanges, but getting out of insurance altogether. Also, 31% of them uh, are, are not now accepting Medicaid patients because we have all these new Medicaid patients. 31% of them are saying we're not going to take them. Well, you know, we've always had a two-tiered health care system, just as we've had multiple tiers for cars, housing, restaurants, you name right. it. But the beauty of the capitalist profit motive is that what the rich enjoy merely signals what we'll all enjoy if capitalism prevails. The problem with Obamacare isn't so much that it's foisting a two-tiered health care system on it, is that it's bereft of capitalism. And because it is, because there's no profit involved, we at the bottom will not get to enjoy future health care advances you know, as quickly. You can say it's always been there, that the two we get that. We know the two-tier system has been there for decades. The, what we're talking about is making it worse. And the idea that you can differentiate health care in this country, where the poor and the middle class may be iced out because it's being made worse by a government-imposed model, that's where the debate should and, sit. And, and Rich, I would, hold on a second. Rich, I would push back a little on this thing that, that we've always had two-tier, because we've had, essentially, I think, three-tier. The rich, they get whatever they want. They could pay cash, they get it. Uh, the poor had Medicaid, the poor and the elderly that had Medicaid and Medicare, and then the the middle class had the insurance, so we really had three. The point is, the middle class is getting pushed down to the to the Medicaid level, and everybody now is going to have that sort of government model, well, right? Wait, well, that, hold, hold on, Rich. Well, exactly. It's going it's going to a two tier system. It's as if you know you have private jet travel on one end and Greyhound buses on the other, right. and not much in between. And when you have a thriving private market, you have car rentals, you have coach airfare, you have business class airfare, you have a multiplicity of choices and that's what, what we're, we're, you know, we're creating two extreme choices and the vast, vast, vast majority of people are going to be stuck onto this rationing Carrie, system. Go ahead. Well, and the main part is that it's about quality. So we see from the Oregon Medicaid study that the quality in terms of life outcomes of people who are on these Medicaid plans, it's as if they didn't even have insurance. So the quality of these of the lower tier plans is going to be severely diminished and that is going to be awful. Sabrina. And it's also the only thing that Americans are really caring about. If you look at opinion research right now, they don't really care that it's a government run program. They don't really care about cost. What they do care about is quality. And people, I think promoters of Obamacare who think that Americans are going to go along with this, are going to go along with the idea that they can't choose the doctor that they really want to see for their child. Um, I think that they're, they're underestimating the American well, people. And Rick, that's, I think that's a great point. The fact is that we focus on price and we can debate whether it's more expensive, less I happen to think it's, it's more expensive already, but the point is there's another cost, and the cost is quality. Don't you think the quality will diminish as the government gets more involved? The government is not, you know, there's so the many things. The government is more involved. Really? How so, not, David? We can well, debate no, about why the Why don't you tell everybody not to jump in? Involved. I won't bother answering if everybody just wants to go and do it for me, You okay? really think, hold on a second. I would you like really, you to tell hold on, me. Rick, Rick, hold on. You really think the government is no more involved now than it was before? I just asked you to before? tell me, David. How is the government more involved? By, they run by it forcing, hold on a second. You yeah. asked a question. Let me answer it. By forcing insurance policies or insurance companies to do things that don't don't make economic sense, and that raises the price for everybody. Wait, no, by David, forcing a lot of people, just, hold, hold on. on, I haven't finished. You asked you me a question. The question. By forcing a lot of companies to do what they say they can't do without raising prices. So That's you government didn't, getting so more you involved. Did, no, you didn't show me how the government more in, got government more involved. Government mandates and insurance. It's yeah. mandating everybody, the everybody structure else of answer. the plan. I'll do it next it's, week. It's okay? forcing people to buy products they don't want to buy. All right, Rick. Again. How is the government less Because you, involved? what you did was you subjectively said that you think that they have somehow changed the economic model. Government has involved with regulating health care since as far back as you and I can remember, only it's been state government. All that we've seen happen here is that the federal government set up a coverage level for private okay. insurance. We gave you your and say, they, John, no, Tamney, you really I'm, John Tamney, I am you not gave everybody buying that. You really say. think, John Tamney, that the government is no more involved now than it used to be in health care? Oh, it's far more involved. And President Obama once said he wants to bend the health care cost curve downward. That misses the point. High health care costs are beautiful. That is a lure for entrepreneurs to come in and figure out a way to bring us obscure surgeries and health care programs that once were out of our reach. You right. need high prices to get low prices. Folks, we got to leave it at Medicare that. Coming up next, on american the charge from Lois Lerner's attorney that has conservatives and the Forbes gang charged up. Oh, oh. The hour of